السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلهاً واحداً أحداً فرداً صمداً قيوماً نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد صل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام وما اختلف الذين أوتوا الكتاب إلا من بعد ما جاءهم العلم بغيا بينهم صدق الله العلي العظيم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام Verily the faith, the path Deen means the path, the road to God is Islam and Islam has been defined in two ways the macro Islam and the micro Islam the macro is the submission Al Islam means submission when you submit to the will of God to the kingdom of God but the micro is this version the, the latest version The religion that was, and the book that was brought by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And every divine religion has a three main components. Three main components. When they are assembled together, they they make religion. They create religion. The first component is the ideology, the aqidah, the doctrine. The aqidah is the infrastructure, the foundation of every religion. And we have been told that the main doctrine of every religion is the concept and the message of monotheism, tawheed, tawheedullah ta'ala. Wa ma arsalna min qablik. We never sent any messenger before you, Ya Rasulullah, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُحِي إِلَيْهِ We give him instruction, نُحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ That is the core value of every religion, is monotheism, the connection to God. We need to be connected to God. That is the essence of faith. 99.9% .9 of religion is connection with God. The essence of our faith is connection with God. Without God, we are nothing. With no relationship with God, we cannot function. We cannot find our way. So that is the most important element in any religion, not just the Islamic faith, in any other religion. If the religion is divine, if the religion is from the Lord, then, then the core value of that religion is monotheism, Tawheed. And there is another concept. With Tawheed, Tawheed is intertwined with another concept, and that is the belief 
in the day of judgment. The belief in the day of judgment gives value to my life and value to my work. If I know that my work is going to go unnoticed, whatever good I do, nobody is going to thank me, no, nobody is going to appreciate or whatever evil I do, I can get away with it. There is no punishment, there is no liability, there is no accountability, there is no responsibility. Then my work would lose its value. It is the belief in the day of judgment that even if my work goes unnoticed in this life, in the dunya, but in the akhara, it's not going to be unnoticed. It is going to be appreciated. And verily, truly, his sa'i, his endeavor, his work, his production, whatever he or she does, so fayura. It is going to be appreciated. It is going to be rewarded. It is going to be seen by us. So that gives value to our work. Otherwise, we lose hope. If there is no day of judgment, why I wake up in the morning? Why I go to work? Why I have to be honest and truthful? There is no reason. Because there is no accountability, no responsibility. But because there is a responsibility, because there is a day of judgment, because everything we do, it's recorded. Everything we say, it is recorded. Then that gives value to our life. That makes us work even harder in this life. This is our motivation that there is a day of judgment. There is a day that nothing goes unnoticed. Whether it is good or, or bad. They say, what sort of accounting is this? That never leave anything, whether big or small, but to be recorded. Ahsaha. Verily, they find what they did in this life. Wajad. They will find it right before their eyes. So the belief in God gives me this feeling that I'm not, not alone. When you believe in monotheism, you are not alone. Here, you have a support in this life. Even if your family abandons you, your friends abandon you, but God would not abandon you. You are not alone. You have a caretaker, and that caretaker is, is called God. And the belief in the Akhirah will give you more incentives to work better. Because everything is recorded, everything is invested. Every penny you put into this endeavor is going to be invested. You're going to see the result of it. This is one part of religion, aqidah. This is the infrastructure of our religion. Then we come to the second part, which is the law and the code of conduct and the legislation, which is sharia, which is the Islamic law, which is the fiqh, which is equally important because it is the Islamic law that regulates and organizes my life organizes my affairs with people, with myself, with my Lord, with my community, with my family. It regulates our life, the Sharia. And Sharia has a say in everything it has a say. It has a directive. It gives direction, the Islamic law. And the Sharia has been divided into two sections. If you open any book of fiqh today, it has two main sections. It has ibadat, this is your relationship with God, and mu'amalat, your relationship with the people around you. And both are important, both. We cannot survive with only ibadat, without mu'amalat. We cannot survive. I cannot say, the most important one for me is God. I don't care about people. No, I have to care. I have to care about my family. I have to care about my friends. I have to care about my coworkers my classmates, my neighbors, I have to care. I cannot live by myself here. Which prophet lived by himself? Nobody. You have two dimensions, God, you have the, the vertical dimension and the horizontal dimension. God and people, and they integrate each other. 
On the other hand, there are people who say, I care about people. No, no problem. I don't believe in God. I believe in goodness. I have to be good. I have to be kind. I have to be honest. This is enough for me. No, it is not enough. It's not enough because it is God who created you. God who taught you how to be honest. Have you seen some children when they rebel against their parents? They say, my father is not important. My mother is not important. They are not important in my life. They are important. They are the one who implanted in you the seeds of goodness. If you are good, then it is your mother and your father. If you are good, kind and generous, it's because of the teachings of your family. So you cannot neglect them. You cannot bypass your family and say, I can survive without my parents. We cannot survive without God. It is God who created me. God who guided me. قال فمن ربكما يا موسى قال ربنا الذي أعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى Not only he created me physically, he taught me, he inspired me. Who inspires us every day? It's God. So we have two types of relationships and they complement each other and both are important, both. Neither Islam says sit in your mihrab 24 hours and worship me and be careless about your wife and your children and your neighbors. Nor it says it's only people and there is no God. Both are important. This is the Islamic law. And therefore in every religion <clears throat> they have a law. Tawrat. Inna anzalna Tawrat. We spoke about Tawrat last night here. Tawrat it's a book of law, book of Sharia. Even in a Christianity where they say the Bible, it's not a book of law, it is a book of manners and akhlaq. But the Christianity followed what religion? Jesus followed what religion? Jesus followed the Jewish legislation, the Jewish law. He followed the Jewish law. He was, he was a Jew himself. He was from Bani Israel. So he followed Though the Bible, his book, was book of guidance and book of akhlaq, not book of sharia. But the Bible is not alone. The Bible is linked to the Torah. Allah sent Isa with the Bible. The Bible does not have articles of law. It's a book of guidance, book of stories, book of, book of directives, how to lead your life, not book of law. There is no legislation. Legislation, uh, Musa السلام, came with legislation and the second one who came with legislation after Musa was the Prophet Muhammad oh. ya, ya Bani Israel, inni Rasulullahi ilaykum musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya min at tawrat I came to confirm the law of the Torah. I am not bringing a new law. I am confirming the law of the Torah. This is one aspect of my mission, to confirm the Torah, the teachings, the law, the legislation of the Torah. The second aspect, وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ And to give get glad tidings that there is the arrival of a messenger after me whose name is Ahmed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Sharia, this is sometimes people are scared in America. Islamic Sharia, Sharia, they want to dominate America with Sharia. They don't even know what is Sharia, whether it is Chalo Kebab, whether they, they, they don't know. They hear something Sharia, they don't know. Is it animal? Is it food? Is it, you know, creature? Sharia is a religion that is flexible. Flexible, Islamic Sharia. Islamic Sharia is not is not rigid, is not harsh, is not stringent. It's very flexible. It's very moderate. Sharia came to bring happiness, not sadness. To bring relief, not stress. This is, God says in the Quran, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ I intend every yusr, every happiness, every easiness for you. I want life to be easy, not difficult. This is why Sharia is compatible with every time, with every community, with every community. Sharia is not rigid. Sharia is not backward. Sharia is not narrow-minded. 
Some Muslims and some non-Muslims, they misunderstood Sharia. The American people, they misunderstood Sharia out of prejudice. Some Muslims misunderstood Islamic Sharia out of ignorance. One of the things that I profoundly disagree with here in America is when women wear veil, niqab veil, not hijab. I, I agree with hijab, but disagree with niqab, with veil. Veil is not for America. If you want to wear veil, go back to Riyadh, Qasim, Kabul. MashaAllah, we have plenty of cities. Enjoy the veil there, niqab, showing only your eyes. But if you want to live in this country, you have to respect yourself. When you don't respect yourself, others are not going to respect you. There is no need for veil. Why do we have hijab? We have hijab so we don't bring negative attention to women. What you are doing when you wear veil, you are exactly defeating the purpose. You are bringing negative and bad attention to women. When you see them at the airport, or even when they drive with niqab, this is not good. It's not good. Sharia does not say you have to wear niqab in America. Maybe in your country, this is part of your customs, tradition. We don't argue about that. You have a freedom of practice. But in this country, it is counterproductive when a Muslim woman wears niqab. We don't have Halloween every night. Halloween is only October 31st. You have to respect yourself, respect your tradition. Don't bring ugly things to Islam. Kunu zaynan lana. If you walk in the street, be an attraction to Islam. Don't be a source of mockery. People look at you and say, look at those backward people. Look at how they were. The other day we were on the beach. The man, he wears short sleeve and short pants, but his, his wife is in niqab, wearing niqab. And she's the one who's running after the kids. The kids were, you know, Arab kids, very energetic, mashallah. They run around. He sits there and he sends his wife. This is mockery. This is mockery. This should not happen here. They misunderstand Islam. Islam says hijab is to protect you. Hijab is to bring you more value, more respect, more admiration. Not to look down at you. So Sharia is compatible with modernity. Sharia is compatible with aql. Anything that is not ma'qul, aql does not accept, Sharia also doesn't accept. Especially in the tradition of Ahlul Bayt. We have a, a maxim in the school of Ahlul Bayt. We have a maxim that others, they don't have it. In the school of Ahlul Bayt, our maxim states, Kullu ma qabila bihi al-aql qabila bihi al-shar. Whatever is accepted to the normal brain, average brain, average reason, Sharia will endorse it. And if the average brain does not accept it, then Sharia also doesn't accept it. Because Sharia is for me. Sharia is for a person who has a brain. It's for me. It came to be to benefit me, to help me out, not to destroy my life, not to make my life miserable. So that is the second aspect of religion. And the third one is akhlaq. Even if the Sharia is perfect, even if the doctrine and the aqidah is perfect, if akhlaq are not good, we're going to lose all the credit. Akhlaq is the way you conduct yourself, the way you behave in your family, in your society. Mannerism, akhlaq. And that is the real fruit of every religion. Every religion. Have you seen some, some fruits are bitter? You can't taste them, you cannot tolerate them. And some others are very tasty. Try to buy, try to go to Costco and buy the, the angur. What is angur? Grapes. Grapes. Very tasty, believe me. You enjoy it. Try. I'm doing marketing for Costco because I, this is the only place I love. You enjoy it. How do we enjoy Islam? Through the akhlaq. Through the akhlaq. If a person is a worshiper, he worships, he does his salat, his siyam, his Quran, his dua, his ziyarah, but he doesn't have akhlaq. When he deals with people, he's always frustrated. He's suspicious. He's angry. He's dishonest. Then there is no, there is no benefit. This is not religion. He's wasting his time. Wasting his time. 
Akhlaq is the beautiful fruits, the tasty fruits. The sweetness of Islam are the akhlaq. And this is why the Prophet, out of all things, he focused on akhlaq. He said, Innama bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al akhlaq. I came to integrate your manners, to make your manners more humble, more beautiful, more attractive. But Muslims don't listen. Muslims don't listen. If we go to Muslim countries, the behavior is not good. The behavior is not good. They don't follow the sunnah of the Prophet. They follow him in the way he prays, probably. They argue whether he prayed this or that. They kill each other for this. But they don't follow him in his honesty, in his integrity, in his truth, in his sense of responsibility, in his sense of care and love and forgiveness. They don't follow his sunnah. The material sunnah they follow. And sometimes they follow wrongly. But when it comes to the spiritual and moral sunnah of the Prophet, the moral sunnah, the moral legacy of the Prophet, it is abandoned. Abandoned among the Muslim, Muslim ummah. And one of the things that Islam does not like is racism. Islam does not want me to say, I emphasize I, Iraq is the greatest country just because I am born in Iraq. This is not right. Yes, I might, I might love my country. Iraq, Pakistan, Lebanon, Afghanistan, Iran, you might love. But don't to bring the issue of superiority. Just because you are born in that village, that village is the center of the universe. In Isfahan, they believe Isfahan is the center of universe. Isfahan, Nisfah Jahan. It is a beautiful, but it is not Nisfah Jahan, no. They haven't seen elsewhere. Same thing with Egypt. Egypt, if you go Egypt, Masra Ummu Dunya, the mother of the whole universe. But the piles of a trash, it's up to two meters. Have you seen? Cairo, go yourself. Go to the Giza, where the pyramids are. You can't go there because of the piles of a trash. This is not Ummu Dunya. Allah says, be clean, be nice, be organized. Then you can brag. But if you are always behind, you cannot brag of your nationality, your race, your blood. Allah is not racist. Allah created races, dif dif uh, different races and different ethnicities and colors on purpose. On purpose. لتعارفوا. So we respect. We respect. See this masjid, see the carpet underneath you? It's colorful. Different colors. When you put them to together, they give this a beautiful scene. Colorful. When you were colorful, see, you're wearing different colors. I wear different colors. It's a beautiful. Allah says, this is, this is the fabric of the humanity. When you put them together, different colors, it, it, it gives fascinating scene, fascinating look. This is the reason not to brag, not about superiority. Nowhere a God who says this community is superior to others, this is not a good God. We disagree with him. Allah says only with one thing. When you are more pious, more responsible, then you may brag. But if you, if you are not, then don't brag about anything. So these are the three components of Islam. Number one, and any religion. Number one is aqidah, which is the doctrine, the ideology. The second is the sharia, the law. And the third is the manners, the akhlaq. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytah al-tayyibin al-tahirin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله 
أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره Today is the 8th of ربيع الأول the anniversary of the martyrdom of the 11th Imam 11th Imam of the school of أهل البيت الإمام الحسن العسكري عليه الصلاة والسلام who is the father, he is the father of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salatu wassalam. This Imam, the 11th Imam, and the 10th Imam, Imam Ali al-Hadi, his father, they were brought from Medina to Samarra by the Abbasid establishment, caliphs, to put them under house arrest. Those Imam, Imams were very popular among the people of Medina, the Muslim community. And the Abbasid, they feared the influence of the Imam on the people. Therefore, the Caliph asked them to move from all the way from Samarra, from Medina to Samarra. And Samarra, at that time, it was the capital of the Abbasiyun. The original capital is Baghdad, but because of the revolt of the people of Baghdad against the Abbasid and their dictatorship, they had to move their capital to the north, to Samarra. For about 50 years, the capital of the Abbasiyun was in Samarra, and then they came back to Baghdad. So during that time, Imam Ali al-Hadi, the 10th Imam, and the 11th Imam, Imam al-Hassan al-Askari, they moved from Medina to Samarra, and they were under house arrest. They did not have a freedom to contact people. As a result of that, Imam al-Hadi died by poison, and al-Hassan al-Askari died in the year 260 Hijri by al-Mu'tamad al-Abbasi, the Abbasid Caliph, again by poison, and both of them are buried in Samarra. If you go to Samarra, you see the graves and the shrine of both Imams, the 10th and the 11th Imam. What I like about the Imams, maybe not very much the history, but the legacy, what they left behind. Imam al-Askari died at the age of 28 only. He was only 28 years old when he died. His father, Imam, Ali al-Hadi was 40 years old when he died because the establishment, political establishment of the day, they feared them. They feared their front. Imagine the Imam is under house arrest. He has no army. He has no militia. He has no weapons. He has no money. But still, the Caliph, he fears the Imam. And he would not rest until he poisons the Imam and kills him. The legacy of the Imams, what I loved about this Imam, Imam al-Askari has many traditions, but I chose this one, and I read this one many years ago here on the same podium, but to remind myself and to remind my brothers and sisters. The Imam sends a letter from his house because he could not go in public, so he would write a letter, Risala, to his Shia, to his followers in Samarra and outside. A letter. What does he say in that letter? What does he enjoin upon his community? He says, number one, Nothing is more important than taqwa, my friends. 
Taqwa keeps us peaceful always. Taqwa is the reverence of God in my heart when I see him, when I listen to him, when I know that he's monitoring me. It makes me humble, a humble person. It makes me a more responsible person. I'm not going to hurt anyone if I have taqwa. The day I start hurting, it means the taqwa is missing. There is no taqwa. But when there is taqwa in the heart, in the soul, that person is going to be the most peaceful person in the community. So, أُصِيكُمْ بِتَقْوَ اللَّهِ وَالْوَرَعِ فِي دِينَكُمْ When it comes to matters of deen and religion, be serious. Be considerate. Do not put religion at the last. Always dunya first and religion at the last. Don't do that. Put religion at first. وَالْوَرَعِ فِي دِينَكُمْ وَالْإِجْتِهَادِ لِلَّهِ Strive to deepen your relationship with God. وَالْإِجْتِهَادِ لِلَّهِ وَصِدْقِ الْحَدِيثِ Be always truthful when you speak. وَأَدَاءِ الْأَمَانَةِ Fulfill the trust, the promise. We make promises every day. How many times we make promises when we speak to people from early morning until late evening? We keep making promises. We have to honor them. We have to honor these promises. We have to honor these contracts. We sign many contracts. One of these contracts is marriage contract. When you sign marriage contract, when you put your signature to marry someone, this is a commitment. This is a promise. This is a covenant. We have to honor it. We can't turn our back to, to, to this covenant. وَأَدَاءُ الْأَمَانَةِ إِلَى مَنْ اِئْتَمَنِكُمْ مِنْ بِرٍ أَوْ فَاجِرٍ Give back the amana to anyone, whether that person is pious or impious. Even if that person is impious, he doesn't recognize God, you still have to give him back the amana, the trust. Don't say that he's a kafir, and we have to do zabiha, you know, kafir. Don't say that. Give him back the amana. وطول السجود طول السجود When you do your prayers privately, not in jama'ah. In jama'ah, the imam, the prophet says, the imam of the jama'ah has to consider the weakest in the community. We have people in their 70s, in their 80s, in their 90s. We have women, we have children. Jama'ah has to be, you know, not too fast, but fast. But when you do your private prayers, take your time at home in your room. Nobody is watching you. You are closing the door. Then put your forehead for a longer period of time. If not during the Salat, after the Salat. After the Salat, take two minutes. Disconnect with everything. Put your forehead. طول sujood, Prolonging your sujood. This gives us that energy, special energy, special connection to God. وطول السجود وحسن الجوار Be the best neighbor in, the, in your streets فبهذا جاء محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم This is the core of the Prophet, the core of his message, the message of the Prophet. And then he says, because the Shias were minority, the majority was non-Shia. It's just like today. We are minority. So how do we deal with others? Do we deal with antagonism, with hatred, with suspicion? No. Listen to what Imam Al-Hadi Ashar, the 11th, says to the Shia. How should we deal with the Sunnis? Sallu fi asha'irihim. Go to their communities and do your prayers in, in their communities. Sallu fi asha'irihim. Washhadu jana'izahum. Go to their funerals when someone passes away, passes out. Go and, 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 and be present in their in their janazah, in their funerals, in their cemeteries. Wa'udu marzahum. If someone gets sick, go and visit him or her in the hospital at home. Wa'addu huquqahum. Fulfill to them their rights. Addu huquqahum. Fa'inna rajula minkum. If one of the Shia, you guys, the Shia, wara'a fi dinihi. He's pious in his faith. Wa'sidqi hadithihi. He speaks the truth. Wa'addu al-amana. He fulfills the trust beautifies his manner with people they will say look at the Shia this is their manners look at how they behave they behave like angels 
فَيَسُرُّنِي ذَلِكْ You bring us happiness, your imams, of course. It's like when you, when you praise a son in front of his mother, his father. When you praise the son, the daughter, of course, the parents are going to be happy. They're going to be excited. Same thing with us, believe me. How do we make Rasulullah excited? His birthday is in about a week from now. How do we? What birthday gift I send to the Prophet? When I become a good person in the community, a good Muslim, a good Shi'i, a good followers of Ahlul Bayt, that is the best gift that I can present to my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. اتقوا الله revere God وكونوا زينا be a source of attraction for, for us ولا تكونوا شينا do not be a source of repulsion جروا إلينا كل مودة as much as you can bring credits to أهل البيت within you uh, through your behavior جروا إلينا كل مودة وادفعوا عنا كل قبيح don't bring ugliness to us don't misrepresent Ahlul Bayt. When we misrepresent Ahlul Bayt, today I was telling my wife in the morning, some of the Mu'ammameen, they go nowadays, you know, with these apps and with these short clips, you know, they become popular. So they can get their voice to millions of people within a matter of days or, or hours. One of them the other day, Mu'ammam, he wears Amama. He would say that you can take a slipper na'al and if you don't want to do the aza for imam hussein you don't have sometimes to hit your face with your hands sometimes you can hit it with na'al you know hit yourself with na'al is this the message of imam, imam hussein he gave his life for our dignity to be dignified to be honorable to be respected not to cheapen yourself not to put yourself down he wants you to hit yourself with na'al with a slipper on your face? He's going to be happy for that? This is Mu'ammam in a holy city. And many people believe in what he says. He brings ugliness to Ahlul Bayt. The reason why many people, they don't accept Shia Islam, not because there is a problem with Imam Al-Baqir, Imam Al-Sadiq, Imam Al-Ridha. No, they love them. But because there is a problem with the Shia community, with some of our practices, jahili practices that we do. This what? repulses people, does not allow them to come. Bring beauty to it. If, if you can't bring beauty, shut your mouth. You don't have to give lectures. If you can't. We have to bring attraction to Ahl al-Bayt. What makes sense is Imam Hussein gave his life for me to hit myself. Imam Hussein wants me to study more, to work more, to be a good father, good mother, good citizen. This is what he wants. Not na'al, not, you, not even he doesn't want me to hit myself. Neither with a sword nor with anything else. Even here in LA, on the day of Ashura, Julus, some people have Julus, they hit themselves with chains. They go in downtown. What message you are sending to the, to the American people, to the Mexican people here? You hit yourself with chains? Imam Hussein is going to be happy? People look at you and hitting yourself, they say, those guys are cuckoos, they have to go to mental asylum. Are you inviting people to Shia Islam? Are you inviting people to Imam Hussein when you hit yourself? If you want to do this, you can do it in your home, somewhere closed. I don't care, free country. But don't do that in the middle of downtown LA. You are sending negative message. Where is the aql? Shiaism is about aql. But many people do not incorporate their reason, their aql. Sorry. Sorry, I sometimes, you know, I get carried out, but because I care about Shia Islam, I care about the school of Ahl al-Bayt. I want us to be an example for others in, in, in our manners and in our intellectual capacity too. Allahumma khfar lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi illahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat. Inshallah, Saturday the 24th, next Saturday, at 7 p.m., we are celebrating the Milad of Sayyid Al-Kainati Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At 7 p.m. sharp, inshallah. We don't have Salat Al-Jama'ah because Salat is at 5 p.m. So please do the Salat at home. So we begin the celebration at 7 